Okay, so we just talked about how good marketing, good copywriting, really our job as customer value optimization experts and when we're crafting conversion funnels, right, that's the whole thing we're doing here. All we're doing, step number one, really the most important process is we must be able to articulate the shift from this before state to this after state, right? That's what marketing does, that's what we're looking to do. What happens when somebody moves from here to here? What's the value they get, right? That's the biggie. What's the value that they get when they move from this state to this state? Um, but to do that, obviously we need to be able to determine what is their before state and then what is their after state. And the way that we do that is through this right here, which is called the before and after grid, all right? Now the before and after grid allows us to think in a number of different ways about what is somebody's before state and their after state. It gives us categories um, that, that we can kind of place and, and, and it become very helpful in determining, you know, what are the different emotional states and psychological states and where are people, uh, you know, along these different areas. So there's four primary ways that we can articulate somebody's before state and their after state. And that is have. That's the first one. What does somebody have? Or so what do they have before that they don't have after? Or what don't they have before that they now have after? Again, if you're a doctor and somebody has an illness and then after they don't have an illness, well, that's have. You know, if you're selling spoons, then before you don't have a spoon. Maybe you're eating cereal with a fork and how obnoxious would that be, right? So now after you have a spoon. Have is the simplest. And this is where most ordinary marketers stop. This is where most ordinary copywriters stop in the description of, wow, when you buy this product, you're gonna have this. This is where features lie. And merely focusing on this is why you see a lot of ordinary, boring sales copy and, and landing page copy and stuff like that. It's really breaking from the have into some of these other categories that's gonna, that's gonna kick your copy up a notch and really help with uh, uh, not only increasing conversion rates, but articulating that shift from the before state to the after state in a way that speaks to your customer much more eloquently than merely have. So going from have, we then come down to feel. So how does your product or service change the way that someone feels? Okay, how does your product or service change the way that someone feels? Then we move down to average day, right? How can you change someone's average day? Can you change the story that they tell about themselves? Can you change their narrative? This is big, because sometimes some of the most compelling sales copy in the world comes from story. It comes from narrative. And we, when we speak to someone's average day, maybe you can shift them from a before where you know, their average day is like, you know, it's terrible. It's the worst day of their life and they're living it every day. And now the, it's the best day of their life repeated over and over again. Um, well, you know, then, then you've dramatically changed someone. I think about the movie Groundhog Day, right? You know, he had some average days that were really bad. He had some ones that were really, really good. How can you get them to have more good days? If you can help people have more good days than bad days, you change their life. You're moving them far down that continuum, that value continuum that we talked about before. And then finally, status. Can you change someone's status? Can you change someone's self-worth? That's a big one. We're gonna talk about status a lot because these are actually appearing in, in order of least powerful to most powerful. So think about your product or service right now. Again, I asked you to hold it, to, to hold two thoughts in your head in the previous one. Number, number one, who is this? Who is your Mr. or Mrs. before? What do they look like? Get an avatar in your head. Think about an actual person. If you know of an actual customer and you've spoken and interacted with them, maybe you met them at a trade show or an event or something like that, picture a real life person in your head, okay? And then think about your flagship product or service, that one that you're most proud of. Yeah, I want you to think of just one for now. Even if you have a lot, I want you to narrow it down to one for now. Because when we're building conversion funnels, we're gonna build conversion funnels around specific flagship products or services. So we're not about building kind of the one end all be all funnel. We might have different funnels for different products and services, okay? So for now, let's start with one, all right? If you only have one product, it's pretty simple. So think about yours, but to kind of give you an example, um, I want to talk about one that uh, was a former client of ours, someone that I thought would be really, really difficult because um, I think you might find this example both helpful and entertaining. So what they sold is they sold an infant tub, okay? An infant tub, and it was a foam 
tub that you would bathe an infant in. And if you have ever bathed an infant, you know it's a terrifying and frustrating experience. I mean, I have four kids myself and it never got easier. Like every time we bring this brand new baby home from, you know, from, from the hospital, go to, to bathe them and, and you've got this tiny little little baby and you're gonna put them in this cold, hard tub and you know, you fill it with just enough water they can get wet but not, you know, not drown the kid, right? And it's, it's frustrating, it's terrifying, the kid hates it, you hate it, it's miserable absolutely miserable. So, who is the before? Well, the before, if I'm, gonna, if I'm selling that, then I'm gonna picture in my brain a mom, right? I'm gonna picture in my brain a mom, because while I bathe my kids a lot, let's face it, my wife did, did it a lot more than I do. So, my, my before person is a mom, okay? Probably an un- underappreciated mom. And so, we're gonna talk about all the different ways in which this seemingly innocuous product, this foam infant bathing tub moves people, moves our unappreciated mom from before state to an after state, okay? So let's think about this right now. So before, what do they have? Well, before they have a cold, hard tub. That's all you got, right? After, you have a warm, squishy tub. Now, this is where, again, most ordinary marketers and copywriters would stop. They would say, you know, oh, don't bathe your kid in a cold, hard tub. Instead, bathe them in a warm, squishy tub. You know, our tub is made with NASA proven polymers that when filled with water, tons of blah, 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 blah. And just, they talk about the product. That's all they do is they talk about the product. So this is helpful. This is good. It's a good place to start. But clearly, this is not where we're going to stop. Okay, so let's move on. Feel. Can a soft, squishy tub change the way that a mom feels? Well, before, mom feels scared and frustrated, especially if you're bathing your brand new baby for one of the first times. It's really, if you've done it, it is terrifying. You don't want to break this kid, but you're gonna hold a tiny little infant, you're gonna get them all soapy and wet and then try to not drop them, right? Scared and frustrated. It's an understatement. You know this if you've bathed infants. After, confident and in control. There's nothing more than a new mom wants to feel like than confident and in control. Because if you've ever had any experience with, with new moms, you know they feel typically anything but confident and in control. And if you can give them confidence and, and control, then you've given them a lot. They've moved pretty far on that value continuum. All right, so that's feel. What about average day? Well, the average day, bath time is terrible. It's the worst time of the day. You're trying to like come up with all these reasons that maybe I don't have to bathe this kid, right? They only like spit up on themselves 130 times and they only poop 17 times, right? So they don't actually need a bath today, right? They're fine, they're they're clean enough, right? Well, no, we don't, we need to bathe our children, right? So bath time's terrible, we don't wanna do it. It's, but instead, what if, what if bath time was a breeze? What if bath time was an enjoyable time? Because you're sitting there and you're able to, you know, to, to, you know, enjoy that, that special time with your, with your baby. You know, you're, they're only infants for such a brief period of time and you want to enjoy every precious moment, right? Now that time, which is fleeting, you know, again, my, my oldest is not, not a baby anymore, right? So the baby years are over. I can tell you that time is fleeting. And so what this tub is doing is it's not only changing, you know, the worst part of the day to the best part of the day, it's actually buying them their time back, right? They're buying them some of that time, some of those precious moments. So now you have a tub that delivers precious moments in a time that would otherwise be terrible. Big deal, right? This is a big deal. What about status? Can a soft, squishy tub change status? Sure, before, remember, mom is unappreciated because pretty much tragically, all moms are going to be unappreciated, save like maybe one day a year, maybe two if they remember a birthday, right? So unappreciated. After, well now, mom is super mom. Why is mom super mom? Well, the reason that mom is super mom is because when she's hanging out with all the other moms and they're complaining about how terrible bath time is and how scared and frustrated it is because they have a cold, hard tub, she's able to say, well, Fortunately, for me, bath time is a breeze. It's actually one of the most precious moments. I love that, that time. I feel confident and controlled because I have a warm, squishy tub. You see how that happens? You become super mom because they experience the after. And now, this super mom, when she gets to brag to her friends, when they're all complaining, when they're all frustrated, and she gets to be the one that's confident and in control, this is now the mom that the other moms go to for advice. Right? This is the mom that the other moms feel like, wow, she's really got it all together. Now, 
You think about everything that I've been saying right now, and we're not crafting copy yet, but imagine these copy chunks showing up on your landing pages, right? In your sales copy, in your product descriptions, in all the places where you might ordinarily just say, you know, our tub is warm and squishy and it's about, you know, 20 inches long and 10 inches wide and all the crap that no one cares about. Mom doesn't care about that stuff. What mom cares about is she wants to be confident in control. She doesn't want bath time to be terrible. She wants to enjoy those moments with her child and she wants to no longer be unappreciated. She wants to be seen as super mom. To the extent that you can pack more of these after-based copy chunks into your sales message, you will see your conversion rates skyrocket. And if you are doing this for a client, you're going to look like an absolute genius. Either way, even if you're not writing copy, if you complete one of these before and after grids for a uh, if, you if you complete a before and after grid and hand it off to a copywriter, you're giving them a tremendous gift and a tremendous shortcut. Okay, so that's a before and after grid for a bathtub. Uh, what I want to do is give you another example of, of a service that is even more innocuous than a, than a baby tub. We'll save that one for the next video.